Hey, good morning. Thanks for joining me for another Daily Word. Today we are in Luke chapter 15, verses 1 to 10. So if you haven't read that yet, just press pause and come back and I'll walk us through this passage. So we enter in chapter 15 to the one, of, one of the most famous, one of the most well-loved portions of Scripture. This is one of the, the Mount Everest chapters in the entire Bible. And so uh, I'm going to look at the first two parables today. I want you to notice the context. Notice it says in verse 1, the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to him. The Pharisees and the scribes grumbled, saying, this man receives sinners and eats with them. Well, we, we look at those words and say, thank God for that, that he, he interacts and, and eats and, and, and fellowships and receives sinners, because that's what we are. But for the self-righteous, that is, that, 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 that's just not acceptable. So these parables, these three parables are in response to this complaint that Jesus receives sinners. And in in each of the parables, we have three lost things. We have a lost sheep, a lost coin, and a lost son. And what what we need to see is that there are also three parties. There are three parties, three parables, three lost things, three parties. One, when the lost thing is found. The second, when the, when the, the, and the, uh, I'm sorry, the lost sheep is found, the lost coin is found, and the lost son returns. So there are three parties when the lost thing is found, and that that is a picture of the the joy in heaven when people repent of their sins. So I want you to think through this now. There There are two kinds of people listening. There were the tax collectors and the sinners, and then there's the Pharisees and the scribes. There are two responses to what Jesus is going to say here. There's repentance and there's rejection. Next, there's also two realities that are contrasted in this passage. There are lost things and there are found things. In the parable we're going to talk about next time, there there are two brothers. There's a younger brother and an older brother, which which, um, are never, these are not real people, but they represent real people. And then what we're going to see next time is there's also two kinds of lost people. There are irreligious lost people, that's the younger brother, and there are religious lost people, that's the older brother. So the goal of this passage, the entire passage, is to confront the Pharisees, to confront the older brothers in their self-righteousness, and to call them to repentance. So uh, in, in looking at these first two parables, they're very simple, right? Something is lost, and then something is found. But what I want you to see, what is, if you, if you read the passage, was there a particular word that jumped out more than others? Five times in verses five to 10, there is, there is a word that keeps coming up and it's the word joy or rejoice. I don't know if you've ever lost something um, that was really valuable to you and you found it, but isn't there a sense of relief and even a sense of joy that I found it? I want you to think about heaven that way, that when people turn from their sins, when people trust in Christ, it fills heaven with joy. Now, for you, I wonder, is heaven, was heaven filled with joy in the day that you repented? Was there, was there a day that you can point back to when you turned from your sins Turn from your rebellion. You surrendered to Jesus as Savior and Lord. You're trusting in Him and Him alone to save you. Just imagine that day that when when you gave your life to Christ, maybe some bell went off, maybe some some alarm, who knows? Maybe, maybe I I think about the the hospitals that when when a child is born, that that this little song comes on and it plays throughout the hospital that that another baby was born and people smile and think about that in heaven. There was a new birth and that new birth down here caused joy up there. Listen, we think about God, it's so, it's so interesting that we don't connect him to joy. God is the most joyful being in the universe. And if you think about the passage, I want you to think about these things too. God in the passage is not the sheep and the coin, right? God's not lost and we find him. 
We are the coin. We are the sheep. We're the sheep that strays away. We're the coin that gets lost. And notice, in the, in the parable, Jesus is the shepherd that, that chases after the sheep. Jesus is the picture of the woman who searches for the coin. Nothing is going to hold her back. Nothing is going to keep him from finding that sheep. He's going to leave the 99 to go find that one. And when he does, there is joy inexpressible in heaven when one sinner repents. So not only is that true for you, but it is true for those you love. So when you are praying for people who are lost to be saved, you are praying that joy in heaven would increase, that joy in heaven would be experienced as you as you pray for the salvation of your loved ones and as God uses you to actually save save the people you know and love. He uses you to be a a conduit of joy in heaven. What an amazing, amazing God and an amazing truth. See you next time for another Daily Word.